Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. We're just recapping the uh, features of the fascist austerity plan submitted by Congressman Paul Ryan. Uh, We're wondering whether he comes from a John Birch Society family. He seems to come from the most reactionary part of uh, Wisconsin, uh, where the main support for the uh, equally fascist Governor Walker is located. And this is simply genocide against the American people. You abolish Medicare and replace that with a voucher where you're on your own. And if the money on the voucher is not enough to buy a policy, tough luck for you. You're on your own. Risk is shifted to you. Uh, That will kill people. If you take down Medicaid through a block grant program and let the states gouge and chisel, that will kill others. And uh, this other issue about the, the elderly people in the nursing homes getting paid for by Medicaid, if you tell the families you have to, uh, come up with that money yourself, that will either bankrupt the families, and this is others, not just the elderly, but the, the, uh, the younger people, then uh, that will also lead to various, uh, a wave of euthanasia and, uh, and death. So this is uh, a direct assault, not just on the existence of the middle class, but on the lives of a whole bunch of people in the American, the American population. He wants to reduce the federal workforce by 10%. Well, that's, uh, that's, hundreds of thousands of jobs, a five-year pay freeze. He's acting as if the federal workers created the Depression. How about the zombie bankers, Ryan? How about the Wall Street sales tax to gouge back the ill-gotten gains from the recipients of the bailout that you Republicans voted for? Because you did. It was your president, your Secretary of the Treasury, Paulson, who came up with this, and you're telling me you're you're a different kind of Republican. Yeah, right. Um... Research and development. Want to keep up with China? Well, not with Ryan. Ending subsidies for applied research. (laughs) No more. And just to show what kind of a scoundrel this guy is. Remember Obamacare. Now, we're against Obamacare here. We don't like that um, individual mandate. But the other thing we didn't like, and we talked about it a lot, was the half trillion dollars in savage cuts that Obama enacted into Medicare. And you'll remember... The Republicans in the Senate, led by McCain, forced the Democrats to vote several times to cut half a trillion out of Medicare. Now, this was purely demagogic, but they wanted the Democrats on record voting for those cuts for future reference. So here's what Ryan does. Ryan repeals Obama's health care reform. And he therefore repeals the stuff about no no pre existing conditions. These little shucks these little positive points that were sprinkled in to make this horrendous thing more palatable along with the individual mandate so he he gets rid of the individual mandate but he retains he keeps the half trillion of cuts to medicare so he keeps probably the worst immediate feature of the obama health care law and he's he's going to gouge you any way he can except if you are rich or super rich. There's a spending cap on all spending, a straitjacket to suffocate the future growth of the United States. All spending is capped at 20% of gross domestic product, down from the current level of 24%. And with this, he says he's going to balance the budget in 2040. Well, surprise, Congressman Ryan. Austerity cuts do not work. You cut the budget this year, the deficits will be greater next year. It's a world economic depression. So anyway, now with Ryan, $6 trillion of cuts. Uh, And we have all kinds of reactionaries saying, oh, what courage. And Obama is already on record saying that, you know, Ryan is a serious guy and deserves deserves, uh, some kind of a hearing. It goes in the direction of the uh, BS commission, the Bulls, Simpson or Cat Food Commission, as it's been called, the Riblin. Riblin has been uh, has been flirting with Ryan. The uh, the Democratic austerity ghouls and the Republican austerity vampires are uh, are meeting. I'm sure in in some secret session to plan this out. And again, one of the main ways this could this could be stopped is with some nice big scandals, and uh, that's unfortunately that situation. Similarly, in the states, this past week in Wisconsin, we had this very interesting. Uh, election. I believe the Milwaukee County Commissioner replacing the fascist Walker 
who had gone on to become the governor of the state, that an anti-Walker uh, Democrat, I believe, or somebody who claims to be anti-Walker, has taken over as Milwaukee County executive. But the big election was the Republican Prosser, uh, a tool of uh, of um, Walker in the same, well, we won't compare him to various figures. I was thinking of Freisler in the um, German courts of the 1930s. But so uh, Prosser, Prosser or Freisler, um, was running for re-election to the state Supreme Court of Wisconsin against the Democrat Kloppenberg. Now, Kloppenberg was no bargain. Kloppenberg would have had a better chance of winning this election outright if Kloppenberg had come out and said, I'm for trade union rights, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep trade unions as part of the American social contract. She wouldn't do that. She prevaricated, right? She, she suggested that she might. But this was anything but a clear choice. Kloppenberg was a weak entry. But Prosser was such a villain that it looks to me like he lost the election. But uh, at the time when Kloppenberg was winning by a margin of several hundred votes, we get the news that Kathy Nicolaus, the county executive of Waukesha County, came up with 10,000 votes that she had inadvertently misplaced. Now, this reminds me of this horrendous woman in Florida back in 2000, the one with the, um, with the Electra uh, eye makeup. You'll remember her. I can't remember her name, but she, she went on then to try to run for the Congress and what have you. Kathy Nicklaus of Waukesha. Waukesha used to be known for beer manufacturing, so maybe she had drunk herself under the table. Um, this is a clear case of uh, suspicious vote fraud. This is vote fraud, not voter fraud, but vote fraud done by uh, government officials, uh, as in Florida. So uh, is there any guts in the Holder Department of Justice? Will they go after this Nicklaus for coming up with 10,000 Votes, I guess we'll see all of that. Um, generally speaking, these are all features of uh, a Weimarization of U.S. politics, as we've talked about over the, uh, the last couple of months. So in Wisconsin, we're left with this, what looks like a stolen election, and the battles in the other states, in Ohio, in Indiana, in Michigan, where we have the, uh, the full burning, the full Heinrich burning in Michigan with Governor Snyder, not just doing the budget cuts, but actually doing targeted tax increases on the poor, the sick, the elderly, the defenseless, uh, and workers in general. This is now the situation. So uh, we are looking at a worldwide attack on the institution of the modern nation state. In the Middle East and elsewhere, it is done under left cover with use humanitarian intervention. We'll talk about this in the second hour. But in the United States, the neo-feudal assault on the modern nation state is mediated, first of all, through the uh, raving reactionary attack of these uh, Tea Party um, fanatics, with Obama eagerly looking for chances to capitulate. Now, in the wider world, the depression rolls on. You'll, you know, remember that we've been working with this comparison of the European banking crisis of 1931, the one that hit. Austria, Germany, Eastern Europe, and then destroyed the British pound in September of 1931. In that case, it was all done during a six to eight month period, blew out the entire European banking system. Uh, this time around, of course, it has taken more than a year. The beginning of the Greek crisis originally is about a year uh, in the past now, April, May of 2010 became especially acute, but we're back now, we're hearing again this uh, slogan of the pigs, Portugal, Ireland, Greece, and Spain. These are the hedge fund hyenas who use this kind of uh, despicable language. So what we now have is Portugal heading for national bankruptcy. And of course, it's always interesting to see that the people who are most eager to capitulate to the International Monetary Fund are the ones from the Socialist International, the Second International. In this case, it's Socrates who's brought in the European Central Bank and the International Monetary Fund. And we'll take this up again in the second hour on World Crisis Radio.